Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tuesdays with Tildy. I'm Tildy Wajardo. Today, I'm interviewing Susan Critton. Susan Critton is a master personal brand strategist, executive career coach, and personal branding certification trainer. She's the author of Personal Branding for Dummies, which I have the book. <laughs> she facilitates programs in personal branding, strengths-based leadership, and career transition. She and I initially met last year in San Francisco as we were both going through the Positive Psychology Certification course. And I can tell you that I gravitated toward her, toward her because of her in-depth knowledge and just really her passion and how she cares about really helping people and empowering people. She works with both men and women. And I'm really excited to bring her to you today and give you access to her. Um, one of the main reasons that I'm doing these Tuesdays with Tildy is to give you access to people um, that you normally wouldn't have access to and may maybe not even heard about. Um, but all these people have passion, they have integrity, they get results, they give back, and they agree to make themselves accessible to you, um, unlike some other other experts who who you might never get to get to meet or have access to. So please take advantage of this time with them and ask questions, especially um, today if you're thinking about a career transition or, uh, you know, wanting to expand your, your personal brand. I know that's really big for a lot of us as solopreneurs. So please take this time and ask the questions that you want to ask. And without further ado, here's Susan Critton. Hey, Susan. Hey, Tildy. So good to be here. It's a little early here in California, but excited to be with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to be here. I really, yeah. I really appreciate it and appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. So um, tell people a little bit about you and how you got into doing the work that, that you currently do. So uh, a little bit of a history on that. So um, my early years were actually in retail and wholesale. And then, but I always wanted to be a teacher. And, but when I graduated from college, there were lots of people trying to be teachers. And so when, when I had my first son, bless you, I went back to, um, to graduate school thinking I would be a teacher. And what I learned was I really loved teaching, but I didn't really love working with necessarily high school age. So uh, about then, so I taught high school for a couple of years. And in it, I actually taught the career education piece of it because I was a home economics teacher. And that's where they teach that. And I always have loved the idea of helping people use their gifts in the world and figure out what they are good at and how they can contribute. Like, I think we all have a special place in the world. Um, fast forward, I, ha I, I had my first baby, went back to graduate school um, and focused on career education, thinking that would be where I w ended up and became a career counselor um, and did a lot of work. Yeah, so I'm in the San Francisco area, a lot of work in um, the outplacement world. So when all the tech downturn I literally handled probably thousands of people through that tech downturn in my work there. But I always would say it's too bad that people only look at this when they are going through career transition. And, it, and why can't they do this while they're in their jobs? Like, why can't they think about what's important to them and live their best self? And, and so when the whole idea of personal branding kind of came in, I was in one of the early training classes in like, I think 2003 and just said, oh my gosh, here's the language I've been looking for all these years of really the career process, but, but taken more where you are, like in a, you know, while you're working. And so, um, it was probably a long winded answer, <laughs> but I moved along with that and have now to a place where, um, I do a lot of work in corporate and I do a lot of work individually with clients that do this. And then, of course, when the Wiley folks came along and asked me to write the book, it was great. So, yeah, that's quite an honor. I mean, to to be asked to write the book. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had no I, I knew nothing, really. I feel like half my life I'm like, oh, OK. And um, I had no idea that that was unusual. <laughs> 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 so talk a little bit or tell us a little bit about what you see the biggest mistakes people do when they they are starting their own business and, you know, sort of mis 
mismanaging their personal brands? What are the biggest mistakes, top three biggest mistakes that, that people make? Um, I think, first of all, that they are not living authentically for who they are, that they're trying to be something they're not. They're trying to be what they think people want them to be. And that's a that's a mistake because um, it catches up with you. The second one is, I think, not thinking about who your audience is, is that you've really got to think about who's listening to me, who cares about what I have to sell or, you know, what I have to offer to people and not really taking into account those people, the, the people that you're serving. Um, those are kind of the biggest mistakes. I'm not sure what a third one would be. Would You know, I think then to, here, here's another, oh, here's a big mistake. People jump to the stage of communicating. So like what they look like on Facebook, what they look like on LinkedIn, what materials they put out there. And they haven't done the pre-work to say, who am I? What's important to me? And who am I speaking to? That would be a third one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we see and I see, I mean, I'm one of those women in career transitions, right? I mean, I, I left Southwest Airlines after 20 years of being there to follow my own passion. And um, it's it's definitely scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely scary um, to do that, you know, when you have such a comfortable job and, and you're you're just comfortable in a lifestyle. And a lot of women are jumping out of corporate America and now starting their own business. Um, what would be some recommendations that you have for women um, like us who who are either thinking about it or have already done it? Uh -huh. um, they, I think it's important. Um, a lot of people get very anxious to make a change. And there's something that I, I like to often, if somebody comes to see me soon enough, like, like where they haven't taken the leap yet, but they're thinking about it. I think actually thinking about what strategy you want to use to do that. So um, I, I don't know if you can visualize this, but the mortgage model, the idea that in the beginning you're paying mostly uh, interest and not that much principal, and in the end you're paying principal and not much interest. The idea is I actually think you should start what you're looking to move towards while you're still doing your old job. So it may mean that you're working nights, weekends, but it's, it's really hard for people to just, unless, unless they have a lot of financial resources, to just take the leap without any of the pre-work ahead of time. So I think one of the big mistakes people make is they, they just jump into it without thinking about financially, do I have a cushion? Mm -hmm. Have I thought about my strategy? Have I thought about the people I want to serve? That kind of thing. So I would say be thoughtful uh, more than anything. Be thoughtful. Use some strategy. Work with a coach to help you. Um, I think would all be helpful. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I know that really helped me when I um, decided to leave um, leave the airline is, well, one of the things that didn't help me. <laughs> it helped me later. But one of the things I wish I had I had done is take at least two to two weeks to a month off to really let everything sink in and and really think about what's next and mm. and you know kind of uh recenter myself because and because I didn't take that time off mm. even <clears throat> thinking that because I had been working on webinars for you know two or three years prior to to leaving thinking that I had an idea of exactly what I wanted to do but I can tell you that after after being somewhere for that length of time it it hits you harder than than you think and I think <clears throat> one of the things that I would definitely um suggest to people is to take that time off however however much you can take off to kind of recenter and really think about the direction that you want to go next um so what are some of those questions that that they need to be asking themselves, Susan, um, mm. that, that you work through with your, with your own um, clients? Um, so some of my foundational work is with a man named William Bridges. He's kind of the grandfather of transitions. Mm -hmm. And here's a model, and I, I actually have like a visual model of it in my office. And 
this was so impactful to me when I, I mean, like I knew transitions intellectually, I knew it certainly on a personal level, but there was this visual, and I think because I'm a strong visual person that really struck me. The idea is, is that you've been this and you want to be this. And most people go, oh, I'll take the shortcut, right? Yeah. I'll just go, to, <laughs> go over here. But the reality is you have to go deconstruct who you've been and you have to be in a, a bunch of pieces for a little while. And, and people, <laughs> it's very uncomfortable and people hate that. So they, they want to go, right? But really they have to take apart who they've been and put together who they want to be. Mm -hmm. And through that process, here's the scary part for people that can take a couple of years sometimes, like a really big transition. I'll bet you're finding that it's taking much longer to fully become who you want to be than you thought. And so going to some of the questions, I think a big piece is I start with helping people really understand the deconstructing piece of who they are. And and when I work with a client, I give them basically lots of um, homework things to look at, mm -hmm. to look at each of those pieces to say, here's what I want to let go of. Here's what I want to keep. And now as I put it together, what does it look like as I put that together? So there's a lot of things to ask yourself. But more than that, it's there's a great quote that I have. I wonder if I have it here on my desk. I'm probably butchering it. But <laughs> it's a William Bridges quote that talks about Change is what happens to you on the outside, but transitions what happens to you on the inside mm. and that you need to really honor that and know that it's not a quick process. Right. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I mean, it has taken a lot longer than I anticipated, and I think it wouldn't have taken me as long had I taken that time to myself, you know, mm. because there there has been I've had to disconnect myself. God knows how many times. Now, um, and this last time was probably the, the best thing I ever did, but, but really it was, it was just exhausting because you're right. I mean, there's so many layers that, that you have to peel off, you know, um, somebody said once, you know, that if you want to, <clears throat> um, if you want to bring up all your, you know, insecurities or any issues that you might have, just become an entrepreneur. And, right, <laughs> and you'll see the layers starting to to to, to peel peel away, um, and that's so true. I mean, because it has taken me uh, a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, even being at what I thought was confident and secure, um, it has definitely rocked my world a little bit. But it's been fun along the way. Mm -hmm. um, you do a lot of work with um, executive coaches, and and or you're an executive coach to to C level. Right people. Um, what are you finding? Do you find a commonality with the women that you work with? Um, or what a big difference between men and women that are in C-level positions? So, um, first of all, there are not that many, sadly, right? <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would say, um, a number of the women I work with, so I do work with one of the big four, um, professional services firms. And so probably, one in five of my partners that I work with is women, just to kind of, from a numerical standpoint. Right. And there's a couple of things I notice about that is that often what will come up for them is, and I'm sure you've heard this term, the imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. like that somebody's going to someday like open the door and realize that they're a fake, that <laughs> they have made it this far and they really shouldn't have made it that far. And I hear that, I probably hear that in about half the women I work with. So that's one of them. I think another one that continues to um, just sort of surprise me, I think, is that these are pretty high-powered women making a lot of money and, and are responsible for a lot of things. And yet they're still doing, they're responsible for all the food, cooking, you know, at their house. They still pick, take care of their kids. They still are involved in the PTA. Um, and you know, for some of the women, they do everything at the house. And so some of our work is how can they balance that a little bit? So they're still trying to do it all. Um, and let's see what else might be a couple other things. Oh, I know. Here's one. Um, they often, um, 
they feel like that their being female didn't impact them until they start to get way up in the pretty senior ranks. Mm. And then all of a sudden they feel like they're being really scrutinized for being female. Like, oh, does she do this differently? Or, oh, and they start almost picking them apart where they hadn't had that in their earlier part of the career when it was more about what they produced, not who they were. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Very interesting. I had uh, a friend of mine who is looking for a job right now who for a C-level position. And it was really interesting. I talked to her yesterday and found um, it, the interview was via video, right? And so she said that, and, and she wasn't selected to, to go on to the next level. And the feedback that, that she had gotten was because she, um, she didn't seem uh, friendly enough. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, I said, do you think that they would have asked the same thing of a man? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and it really made me think like, I don't think they would have, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a, a man wouldn't necessarily, um, I mean, if a man was to get that sort of feedback, I think that he'd go, what, <laughs> you know, uh, but I meet all the qualifications and, and everything. So it was really, really interesting. What are some, what are some pieces of advice Susan, that you can give to women that are in, you know, in those mm -hmm. positions and wanting to advance. And I mean, what are, what are some, some, I guess, tangible tools that, that, uh, or pieces of advice that you can provide for them? Mm -hmm. So, um, I had, so, so let me go back to a point you just made about the not friendly enough. Mm -hmm. I think that for many senior level women, that they have learned to, to quote Brene Brown, armor up. Mm. And they're really good at that. And that's how they've gotten by for all the things that they've talked about and the who they've had to be. Yeah. So then they get to this place where they're saying, we want an authentic leader. And it really hasn't been safe for women to be authentic leaders because they've been judged. They've I mean, we, there's a whole different set of criteria, right? So I think that my advice and when I work with them is I have them start to own who they really are, not their armored up self. And in owning who they are, it's that place of starting to, and for them, for m many of the women I work with, it feels like an incredible risk to go mm -hmm. and to let their guard down a little bit of letting who they really are out in the world. Right. And so that is a piece I work on them with. And that's a big piece in the personal branding process is helping them become more of who they are and not be afraid to let that show. Yeah. So how do you coach, coach people or women like that who are armored up into mm -hmm. disarming, <laughs> you know, and not right. totally disarming, obviously, but just disarming themselves um, slowly so that they, they can, you know, be authentic in, in their leadership positions. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I would say is I, I mean, I asked them the question of what is it about you that you would like people to see that they don't see about you? Mm. Um, another one is, um, I use a tool called the 360 reach. That's part of my personal branding work. And I love that. So I usually do a 360 and we look at the data together and the thing that I love about this 360 is it's not just who you are at work and what you do. It's really your character, how it shows up at work. We also ask people from home and the community and your friends. And so we get truly a 360 view to say, what do all these different people see about me? And do I want to have who I look like at home show up at work or vice mm. versa? Um, usually it's not vice versa. But yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I think that that's a trigger to ask some really good questions about what's missing that would make your life more fun or, or make you feel more authentic in your yeah. daily life. And often I pull out the Kleenex box, right? Yeah. There's a, yeah. there's a lot of sadness around letting go of parts of themselves. Right. Yeah. Right. So for those, of us that don't know what a 360 view is, explain that a little bit for everybody. So it's a survey. Um, I use it through Reach Personal Branding, which is who I do my training, uh, the certification program with. And what it is, is that 
you send it out to whoever you want. I mean, really, you can send it out to, I think the most I've ever had was somebody sent it out to 160 people, but it's from all walks of life. So anybody you want. And we ask the questions, when you think of Tildy, what are some of the words that you think of? Um, what are her strengths? What do you see as her weaknesses? What are her leadership? You know, it'll say like competencies. What do you think she's good at? Um, and then there's a place of, these are my two favorite exercises. They're called projective exercises. And so we ask things from a different angle to get people to be more creative. And that's really where the best often comes. So the, the, you get to choose of these four questions. What kind of household appliance would you be? <laughs> What kind of car, what kind of dog, or what kind of cereal would you be? And so um, people pick two of the four, and we get some great answers. Like, um, as an example, for me, when I did it, the one couple of them that struck me was one of them was Susan would be a six-burner cooktop where she has pots boiling on each burner, and but nothing seems to be boiling over. And that's, that's <laughs> right? Like, that's a great description of that's who great. I am. That's great. Yeah. So, um I think that that's that's where we often get the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like that. now, is it when you're when you're asking those questions, are people answering it about you or are you answering it about yourself? Well, it's a true 360. So you take it and then all these other people take it as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we get they, you get a big report. And yeah. and I, one of my favorite pages is the here's what I think about me and here's what they think about me. Is it a match or is it right? way yeah. off and you know that's that's so, so true because I had I worked with um a coach who who actually did something similar like that and I think it was a was it a strength-based um survey I think that it was but you know we took the top five and I sent that <clears throat> I took those top five and I sent it to 10 of my closest friends that know me really really well and had them write which one stands out to them and why. And then they email yeah. me back telling me, you know, um, telling me which one really stood out and, mm -hmm. and described me best. And I can't tell you, I had, I had to have Kleenex too because it was just, it's so um, affirming, mm -hmm. you know. And what was your top strength? I'll interview you for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was optimism. You know, pos oh, positivity. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so, and and I think that's, um, and it was, it, like I said, it was just really affirming and gave me even more confidence uh, to be more authentic um, because of the way that it has impacted other people's lives. Right. You know, right. so if you have, if uh, any of you watching have an opportunity to do any of these strength-based um, surveys, Highly recommend that you take those top five, send it out to 10 people um, <clears throat> or email 10, 10 people and ask them to see which one, um, which one, you know, describes you best and, and why. And um, it's really liberating. It's affirming. It's it's a, it's a powerful exercise. And same thing with what Susan suggests, you know, her th 360 um, and working with people like Susan who who are experts at helping you walk through these things um, and and train you on on how to be more authentic because <clears throat> I, I really believe that this is one of the things that women struggle with. And um, until we are comfortable with ourselves, um, then, you know, and our younger generation see that, um, we're going to continue to to not excel in those places of work or in business or anywhere else, I think, um, you know, that's what hinders, hinders women or keeps us held back the most is our confidence to be ourselves and not have to be comparing ourselves to, to other women. So I actually use the strength finder as well. So I use the two of them in combination. Mm -hmm. And part of what I look at is I have them do the strength finder first. And then when I get the survey, so I write those top five strengths down and I look and say, did those show up? So do people see that about this person? Do they, do they show up as a weakness? And so back to your question about how do you help somebody take that armor off? And some of it is I give them something to replace it with. So, so I, give an example yeah. of that. 
So as we talk about that, I mean, you, you actually just did a really nice job of it. Like, so as we look at their strengths and we look at what comes out of the 360, let's say, for example, um, strategic shows up. But because they are trying to be nice or fit in and women don't look strategic, they may downplay that. Yeah. And so instead, they might be saying, getting comments like not great with details or it's like, yeah, hello, because they're great with strategy. Right. So <laughs> so what I have them do is say, let's own that piece. Right. And let's let's make that visible. A big piece of personal branding is not becoming anything you're not, but letting people see the best of who you are. So part of what I try and do with people is pull that out and say, let's give you some really tangible pieces on which to work with and language around so you can take the best of you forward. Yeah. So Judy, um, I'm monitoring our Facebook mm -hmm. um, live page and Judy mm -hmm. Hoberman wants to know which one you use, which, um, is it just the strength finder and yeah so um lately so i love the strength finder and have been using it for years um and and i think that's a really solid one because it tells you what you like to do like how what what strengths you like to use in the world yeah. and i've been pulling more and more of the via strengths the values and action strengths in yeah. because that tells you the how yeah. So one is the what and one is the how. And I love where they cross over. So as an example, I have learner as one of my strengths. Mm -hmm. And in my VIA strengths, I have love of learning. So that's a good match, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that I love to learn. And uh, the how is that I, so I, I like to be a learner and I love, I love to learn. So my how is that I'm always bringing that in. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Hopefully, did Judy? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Judy. Does that make sense to you? I mean, because I, <laughs> I love the combination because I've been through leadership courses where we use the Strength Finder, mm -hmm. the Standout, the new one, um, mm -hmm. you know, that came out of the Strength Finder, and then when I went through the um, Positive Psychology course, when we did the Values in Action survey, mm -hmm. I mean, it just all came together. It was like a huge aha. Like this is why. You know, and this is how I can use those strengths to my advantage. And, you know, this is why I love doing what I'm doing here, too, um, is taking those 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 strengths and combining them with my values. My values, um, what my number one value is justice <clears throat> and fairness for everybody and wanting to make this available for everybody. You know, um, the other things were, were primarily transcendental which were gratitude, um, you know, more on the spiritual level of, mm -hmm. of happiness, basically, mm -hmm. what the things that make me happy. Um, so I think it really gave me even a better picture of how to, how to utilize those two things and help them mesh mm -hmm. and ensure that I'm thriving, you know, consistently and not, and I think when we're not aligned with those things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, that we have those really highs and really lows because we, we're not living consistently in that, that happy, <laughs> that happy, right. uh, flow, if you will. Right. Of using really the best of you. I mean, so one of my mentors is a man named William Aruda and he's really the, he's, he's taken personal branding worldwide. I mean, he is the, the guy. Um, and William often said to me, says to me, Susan, what's your secret sauce with your clients? And I said, I love them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? And, and it's yeah. one of my values in action is yeah. love. And and I, I really, um, I find something good in each of my clients. And I really do love that about them and try and use that. So. Yeah. Awesome. So Judy's asking, what 360 does she use? Are there different ones, different types of 360? Oh, a million of them. Yeah. Right. There's a million 360s out there. So um, the one I use is called the 360 Reach, and okay. anybody can buy it. Um, but but you, um, it's kind of nice to work on it with a coach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. So um, you and I met last year during the Positive Psychology Certification Course, and I'm so thankful to Amelia and the Flourishing Center for putting that together because I think it was just really a wonderful. 
um, experience for me to meet all of you and um, to have these continued friendships and relationships grow and thrive as well. And to be able to bring you to to my networks and my audience, you know, uh, on a global scale <clears throat> and hopefully help you grow and, and flourish even more in your own business. But talk a little bit about what um, your thoughts on positive psychology and the impact that it's having around the world today. So I think it's opening people up to the idea of, oh, I have permission to be happy. I have permission to, um, to look at some of those things that there are things that you can do to change behaviors that are not about what's wrong with me, but about what's right about me. And I know that, and I'm still, I still feel like I have a long way to go with this, but for me, what I really want to do is incorporate more positive psychology into personal branding Mm -hmm. to give me a different set of tools or continued set of tools to continue to bring out the best in someone. Um, So I really love the movement and it's not about being happy all the time and it's not about always that there's something wrong with you if you're not, <laughs> not at all. It's actually like one of the ones I use a lot with my clients is the idea of rumination, right? Remember we talked about that mm-hmm. and, and people go, well, how do I stop that? And the idea is that you actually need to replace the thought. So yes. now it's given me a tool to help them when they're ruminating, which we all do, but some more than others, um, And so the positive psychology piece of it is some tools that help you just go, oh, I can work through that or, oh, I can be in a different place. So, yeah. Yeah. Explain to people that don't know what ruminating, what ruminating is. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hopefully (laughs) everyone. It's that it's that (laughs) script that goes on and on in your head where you just continue to beat yourself up and go over and over something and um and women i think everybody does it but women i think tend to do it a lot more than men yeah. um so it's it's that place of just the script that runs over and over in your head yeah and you Maybe know you I- can describe it even better on that <laughs> <laughs> well i can certainly give examples of what goes yeah. <laughs> what starts to play through my head you know and it's it's really sort of a worthiness issue right I think mainly with women in that you're not enough or you're not making enough. You're Mm -hmm. continually comparing yourself to, to others. And, um, it's really easy to get into that cycle. And I think what, what, um, what we don't realize is the more that we ruminate on those negative thoughts, the, the less, um, the less happy we are and the less, um, I guess, content that we become. And those those voices start to get louder and louder. And until somebody points out and you start to retrain yourself, retrain your brain to uh, think and catch yourself and be aware of those thoughts and and not to say that you you I don't like to say, you know, stop them, just be aware of them and then kind of switch, do that little Mm -hmm. shift. I call it my little shift. You know, in that, yeah, I could be thinking that, but I really don't want to. I'm going to think this. And I think part of the practice that I enjoy is having things around my house, whether it's sticky notes or little um, cards that I keep from my neighbors who send me these awesome cards. Thank you, neighbors, um, that I post on my refrigerator. And as I'm walking into the rooms and pieces of art that bring me happiness, you know, so that I can immediately shift those thoughts if I'm in my home to go over and read something that that makes me feel good or that reminds me of something or open up my journal and read some of the things that I've written. Um, I think practices like that are Mm -hmm. tangible, even to keep something in your car that that you can easily shift to. And it doesn't have to doesn't have to be anything like um, like a long paragraph or anything like it can be an item. Don't you think so, Susan? Right. So, so I was just thinking about something I have in my house. I have a little gratitude stone yeah. and every so often I go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Like, right. It'll just, I'll see it sitting there and I'll just tap it or touch it and say, it just sort of reminds me. And I, I feel like I am a grateful person anyway, but it's that place to get me to pause and, and just be grateful in the moment. Yeah. yeah. So there are lots of tools like that. I think that, that we can use. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I know one of the things that always makes me happy are my little sock monkeys. And I know you guys I got <laughs> I would carry my sock monkey, that. yeah, sock monkey to class with me. And I know, Dave, go figure. I love sock monkeys. <laughs> I have one hanging in my in my kitchen. So anyway, it's little things like that for me, at least that that um, definitely change my next what might be negative thoughts into positive, um, and just really take me to a different place of of joy for me. And that's that's. Uh, that's what works best. And I highly recommend that you guys really think about what and be aware when you become aware of, of those negative thoughts or voices that you're hearing in your own head. Think about what else, what you can do that's just a little bit of a shift um, or what you can tell yourself instead of of um, I'm not good enough or, you know, something I know before doing this show, it's like, who wants to hear what the heck I have to say, <laughs> you know? Or me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but at the same time, you know, pushing through, pushing through those fears and insecurities that we have. And it's merely by saying, why not? I mean, sometimes that's all it takes is a why not. Um, and so um, really suggest that you, you try it. For a day or for for two days, and uh, let me know how what you think and how it works. If you've never done it before, I highly recommend it. Are there any other um, practices, Susan, that that you can recommend to people? Um, so you know, just little things, I guess. Too um, one of the things I actually just gave a talk on this last week was even one called the trust equation about how do you build trust with people. And it was funny because I was actually doing it more for like business people for how they look on LinkedIn. But what a couple of people said before I started is, oh, is this for online dating? And I said, you know, I guess it could be. I, I haven't dated in such a long time that I'd forgotten that whole medium, but it could be definitely used for that. So I think what I, what I really love about the whole positive psychology piece is the idea, and we've talked about a number of them, is using your strengths. Um, here's one. The idea of like, and you, you touched on it, but you didn't say the word, which is the social comparison. Mm, mm -hmm. Like we all do that. And the reality is every single one of us feels insecure. Every single one of, about something, right? Mm -hmm. People may not show it. They may look like the happiest person on Facebook, but they're really not. Right. Um, we all have things that we feel insecure about. But I think a big piece is just to pause during the day, feel grateful, um, notice when you do something well and honor it, mm -hmm. you know, just even like a pause for a moment of saying, I was really good at that. Like yeah. we rarely do that, yeah. right? We, we rarely like pat ourselves on the back and it doesn't have to be, you know, something we put on Facebook or anything. It could just be a private moment where we go, you know what? I did that well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Dave's doing it now. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Good job, Dave. <laughs> uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we close out, Susan, uh, for our listeners and for our audience today? You know, uh, nothing specific. I think that it's just been a pleasure and an honor to be here with you, Tildy. I love the work you're doing and appreciate it so much. So thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you. And for all of you, um, you know, Susan, Susan is really a powerhouse of, of a woman and um, her coaching style is definitely the type of coach that I would want. <laughs> she's very straightforward. She's honest. She's compassionate and she loves what she does. Um, so if you're looking for an executive coach, I highly recommend her and um, and just re reaching out to her um, if if you want her information, we'll be posting it um, when we post the edited version of this interview on our YouTube channel. So you can connect with her there. Or Susan, tell people how they can get a get a hold of you now if they if they'd like to. Um, I think the easiest one is just my um, my email is Susan at SusanCritton.com. Um, one of the things just to kind of add on that is that the reason why I wrote the book is that I can't work with everybody. And I, I mean, really, my intention was not so much to be an author and to be famous on, you know, or like get myself out there as much as it just broadened 
that I could work with so many more people. And I think that that's, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice way to do that. And, and my voice comes through in the book. Like it's, yes. it's, Sounds like I wrote it. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't it, it? Yes, it does. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's yeah. personal branding for dummies. Um, highly recommended. It. It's got some great information in here uh, from Susan. And uh, like she said, to get a hold of her, contact her at Susan at Susan, com, And um, you can connect with her, I'm sure, on social media as well. Um, so, Susan, thank you so much for being part of our Tuesdays with Tildy and our Womanars um, production. Really appreciate your time and your passion. And, um, you know, I just love you. And I think you are a powerful, powerful woman. Thank you. (laughs) And, you know, I feel the same about you. So thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Our mission at Womanars is to make it fun and easy for you to find inspirational and educational content online. We produce shows like this one and many others that uh, we feature on our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to know more, please visit us at Womanars on YouTube. And guys, if you're enjoying these these Tuesdays with Tildy and any other uh, video content that we have on our YouTube channel or anywhere else, please share it and uh, let everybody everybody know to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, and anywhere else. Where else are we, Dave? Are those the only places we are? Twitter. Yeah, and I think we're also uh, working on an iTunes channel, I think, as well. With these, yes. Okay, so we've got an iTunes channel as well with podcasts um, of these interviews and soon, hopefully, all the other interviews as well. So um, really appreciate your support, your encouragement, and thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it.